A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer, and a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise up and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him. Sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had happened. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he said to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, who is a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women of our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those who with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and so enter into his glory? 
Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, it's nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was sitting with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven, and those who were with them, who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised. He's appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. The trouble with these Easter readings is there's just never anything to preach on. Let me observe quickly in the Acts of the Apostles a crucial scene, it seems to me, uh, for what it might tell us. If I go back to Matthew's Gospel, and it's the uh, set of uh, uh, sayings of Jesus that have to do with sending the disciples on mission, okay? We have a famous saying in Matthew chapter 10, verse 10. You received without charge, give without charge. Or another translation of it, you received as a gift, give as a gift. Okay, and so you had no payment that you had to make to receive this wonderful gift of, of um, re redemption and salvation, association with Christ. Therefore, share it. And if you're going to be sent out, then you've got to share the gift that you've been given. So they do. I have neither the silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. I've got a relationship with Jesus Christ, and now you will too. And I'll prove it to you with this healing. In the same way that Jesus gives the gift of forgiveness of sins to the paralyzed man in Mark chapter 2, and those parallels, and the opening line that Jesus offers to that man is, your sins are forgiven. And I'll show you that this is the case now. Rise and walk. Rise and walk. So what they've been given and after all, they've been transformed by the risen Jesus. They've been commissioned and powered by the Holy Spirit. They have that gift now. And what they've been given as a gift, now they give as a gift to this man as well. The two disciples on the way to Emmaus recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread, which in the end of Luke's gospel and in the Acts of the Apostles becomes a technical term for the Eucharist. So... These two things together, I think, give us at least a, a, a point or two of reflection, I would say, if not challenge. The challenge and the point of reflection would be, do we, in fact, recognize the Lord's presence in the breaking of the bread as we celebrate the Eucharist? Do we recognize him in our adoration on Wednesday that we'll be beginning again today? Do we see him there? Do we know the love for us that we can find there? And then finally, for us who've been given tremendous gifts in faith, in church, in community, the gifts we've been given, do we give back as gifts to others? Do we share and invite and welcome and bring in and witness to the joy of Jesus Christ? Those are the two challenges I think that are worthy for us to contemplate today. Do we see him here? Do we bring him out there? Let us stand and pray.